I was just like ready to, you know, face what I had to do and just looking forward to a better life at some point. And it's so funny because we didn't know this at the time, but my mother and I were together when they picked us up. At some mm -hmm. point, they were going to separate us. Obviously, we knew we were never going to possibly see each other again in the right. prison system. And um, I remember looking at her mm -hmm. and saying, I'm taking all this blame my mother has. She's older than me. I have my whole life ahead of me. And my mother's I looking... Even... Yeah. Where does that mindset even come from? I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I knew that, you know, I think when you love, they say you never truly loved unless you're willing to die for it. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's how I feel about her. I, I feel about my mother, you know, and um, I felt like looking at her and I'm just like, you know, my duty is to take this full responsibility. I had nothing to do with it, but it's my duty as her child. And she thought the same. Kiana! <laughs> Yo. Hi. I'm so <laughs> happy that you're here. Thank like, you. je Like, I'm not even... Thank you. Oh, you're going to get me emotional. No, I'm so happy. <laughs> so I've known you for a minute now. Um, Back in the Latina Connect days. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> back in the Latina Connect days. And I have always looked up to you. Thank you. Because you, to me, embody what a successful entrepreneur, entrepreneur Latina entrepreneur looks like. Thank you. And so for me, you've been like a role model in that to see you have multiple businesses. And I'm sure things go crazy behind the scenes. But Every day. girl, <laughs> in the forefront and what we're seeing, it looks flawless. Thank you. Like, I am just so happy. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And thank you for giving us <laughs> this. Thank you. As usual, I, I love your style. Thank you so much, Ali. That means stuff. the world to me. Um, I said I'm getting emotional because it's like every time I hear another strong Latina woman like give you your flowers or just saying how you inspire them, it just gives me that much more drive. And um, it's like I feel like I'm doing it for all of us. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So that's why it's like I get so emotional behind it. It's like real for me. <laughs> yeah. Where does so. that drive come from? I don't know. I feel like just growing up, I always knew like I wanted to be like a boss. And then once you achieve one thing, I don't know if it's like a natural human instinct for some. It's like it just never burns out. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing, but it's just like, I think that's the drive that just keeps me going and going. And yeah. So I think that's where that stems from. Yeah. <laughs> where are you from, Kiana? Believe it or not, I am from exactly where we're at. Bushwick, Brooklyn, born and raised. Yes? Yes. Oh, my yes. God. Where are your parents from? This is where my story begins. Okay. I always say that Bushwick, where my story begins. Mm -hmm. um, so my parents were born in New York as well. Okay. Um, my, they're baby boomers. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, they were born in Brooklyn. But for some reason, my grandparents, when they came over from Puerto Rico, and this is, of course, back then, I would say lack of education or lack of thereof because... Like they lived in Central Park West, brown story, brownstone, four stories, mm -hmm. clueless to where they were at today. Could you imagine? Right. So this is how like my dad was born in New York Hospital, and they had like prestigious things because that's what was around. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's how I was like born in New York Hospital as well and stuff. But uh, no, I'm from here. I'm from Brooklyn. I rep it proudly. A lot of people think I'm from uptown, but no, yeah. I am definitely from Brooklyn. What was it like growing up in Brooklyn? Like, what was that like? It was amazing. Um, I feel like, I mean, I love the new Brooklyn, but the old Brooklyn is just so much more authentic. It was so much culture and, um, it, like, it's like a whole community, you know, raising mm -hmm. um, everyone, each other's children. It, it was just really beautiful to be around, and I'm glad that I was able to live through those years. Yes, of course, you know, there was a crack epidemic, so many things going on, um, the drug infested communities, but we didn't see that. Mm. We just seen love and 
culture and people really looking out for one another. You know, I could walk late at night and it was just, you didn't have any fear, but... Um, so it was like a safe community. Yes, it was like a safe community, although it was a shit show, you yeah. know, but it was just, it was beautiful to be around. And I'm, I'm, I feel like it has a lot to do with uh, growing up and... I'm glad I was raised in humble beginnings because now I appreciate everything so much more. And, yeah. and it built character. Mm -hmm. so that's what I think Brooklyn did for me. What was, like, baby Kiana like? <laughs> what were you like? Um, and what, like, <laughs> did you, like, you know, like, what were some of your hobbies growing up? So it's so funny because people think I'm, like, such a girly or woman now. Um, I was definitely a tomboy. Were you? <laughs> yes, I was such a tomboy. Um, my mother always says I was very alert, very attentive, um, always wanted to learn everything and do everything that the boys were doing. Like, it was there was no barrier for me, so to right. speak. Like, I was the girl who was doing wheelies and training wheels or playing to football with the guys. Like, right. it's just so weird. But um, I think that's how I was. I, I think I've always had a strong character as well, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't get to see all the time just like if I'm doing business with you or certain things um I think I've always been that way like she always says like even my birth was like she knew I was gonna be like a tough one strong yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Do you feel like Latinas always have to be strong absolutely really absolutely mm -hmm. I feel like I mean don't get me wrong there's gonna be a point in time like with my family or with the day I'm blessed to have children or with my husband you want to be a little bit more you know I don't, to say submissive but you know mm -hmm. just like fall back a little bit but I just feel like we have so many barriers to break and prove ourselves you mm -hmm. know and throughout time I think it's gotten much better but just yesteryear is like we've had I don't know if you know but like a lot of Latinos especially I want to I'm Puerto Rican so I can right. speak for myself where um growing up in Puerto Rico like the government really did a lot of the women dirty mm -hmm. you know like they even practiced birth control on women in Puerto Rico and they had no idea, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like we just always have to prove ourselves that much more, you know, before it was like, oh, she deserves to be home, pregnant with kids. And I just always felt like we just have to always hold the fort down. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure, you know, like even like our grandparents or our grandmother, that was like the center stone. Like mm -hmm. that's what held everything together. Right. How do they raise five kids, single moms sometimes, you know, Absolutely. it was challenging girls today can't even raise one child no no <laughs> you know and mommy so. did it before my mom I mean wow I, I don't even know how she did it uh, yeah it's because crazy. she never I've never seen my mom like I mean I've seen her cry but yeah. it wasn't because mental health for us didn't exist it didn't exist so mm -hmm. my mother was not like oh I'm having a breakdown today or you know I need some space you have right. to give me some grace <laughs> like she was no. not saying those things um, so all those words didn't even exist. Anxiety, mental illness, no. none of that existed. That no. was like taboo. No, you know? and my so. mom got married young, really, fourteen years old. Oh my god! And she had her first child when she was seventeen. Was she born in the states or she was? Yeah, she was born here in New York. I was the only one of her kids that was born in Puerto Rico. Oh, I saw you in Puerto Rican too. I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican. My dad, Beautiful. what um, a great combo! <laughs> yeah, my dad's Dominican, but I was definitely born in Puerto Rico, and um, we were raised there for a little bit, like a couple of years. When I came here, I was probably in like the second grade. Nice. Um, and so, you went to, to the Bronx, or did you go somewhere else? Or? No, so I went to El Barrio. I was in Spanish Harlem, um, and then I did some school there, but it was difficult for me because I did not. Um, I didn't understand English at all. So when I came here, I only spoke Spanish. Right, because your first language was... Mm -hmm. And then I forgot my Spanish mm -hmm. eventually. That happened to me too. Did it? Mm -hmm. Well, I was I knew both. Because mm -hmm. remember, my parents were raised here. So right. it's like, it, it's kind of like listening to Selena and Brand Nubians. Or, you know, right, just right. like it's all watching Christina and Oprah. Right, so it right. was like, that was how it was for me. But I remember... Um, when I did go to school, I did lose a lot of my Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I guess it happens to us. It does. It does. What was like the family environment like for you? Like, do you have Again. brothers and sisters? So I have one brother. Okay. Um, it's like my mom's, like the children she had is not too many of us, but we did always have like that family um, community like she has. My mom has like 24 brothers and sisters, but yeah. <laughs> me, I only had one brother 
And um, I just feel like it was very family orientated. Like mm -hmm. I'll never forget our Thanksgivings and Christmas. To this day, um, you know, I still fly down to wherever I have to, where my grandparents are. And it's just like, and they bring all the congas and yes. the food. And so it's always been very family orientated. Yeah. And I think that that's what I strive for too. Even when I when it's time for me to have my family and children, um, I, I want to keep that essence. And just the culture. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of, especially millennials now, like we've lost. Oh, it a gets lot. lost. Absolutely. The culture gets lost. Yeah. And especially like there's so many, even kids like my age or, or women or men my age, I feel like some of their parents didn't even teach them how to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, when I do have kids, you're learning Spanish. Ab absolutely. You know, like because they lose their culture. They mm -hmm. don't even know what it is to visit their island, have no idea. Mm hmm. I feel like you rep us so well here. Thank you. <laughs> like, you're very proud to be Puerto Rican. That's right. I am so proud. Yeah. I am so proud to be it. Um, I, it's funny because I have so many friends of other nationalities, especially like Dominican friends, and everyone thinks I'm Dominican, and I love my Dominican people. I just am um, very proud of where I come from, too. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because it's like every time I go there or – whether I'm watching documentaries or anything about Puerto Rico, it's, it's so, like, it's like I'm connected to that place. Yeah. I feel like, honestly, the first time I got to meditate was in Puerto Rico. Really? Mm -hmm. What was that like? I just broke down. It's so weird. Really? I was on the beach, and I was just, like, I felt that connection, and it was the first time. Because, you know, we all try, right? Like, yeah. well, the ones who choose to try to meditate— we try, we try, but it's just like I have a connection towards that place. It's just so well, weird. Was that, did someone teach you how to meditate? No, or did I you just, just was sit? trying and trying. Mm -hmm. And then when I got there, it it just, I just felt like a connection. And, and it was there in Puerto Rico. It was in the um, Vieques, Ooh. to be exact. I was on a like deserted beach and it was just, it was just beautiful. And has this become, like, your daily practice now? Like, do you um, often meditate? I, I was doing it before, mm -hmm. more so. Now, I, for the most part, my I'm going to be quite honest, my situa my schedule is so hectic mm -hmm. that from the moment I get up, I just say, like, a quick prayer and just, like, try to keep going because, it like, as you said, like, no one cares what we have going on. Just, you got to make sure that as things happen, yeah. you know, and no one cares. They're just, like, they don't care if you're praying, meditating, doing right. gym. They're, like... We need this now, you know. So that's kind of what I'm going through to, going through now. But I would like to get back into it at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's pretty much. I always find because I meditate, but sometimes it's very hard to quiet my mind. Mm -hmm. So now what I do is, the, so there's two things. Recently, I've tried a hypnotherapist. Oh, okay. Hip hypnosis. Wow. So I do see someone that like hypnotizes me. Okay. Game changer. Were you afraid? Oh, of I course. mean, obviously, it has to be somebody you trust. For sure. I was okay. like, am I going to wake up? And if I'm going to wake up, am I going to be the same person? And then I'm like, wait, I'm doing this to not be the same, same. person. <laughs> so, okay. Right. Um, and then I also do visualization. Okay. So instead of meditating and quieting the mind, I quiet my mind, but I actually Visualize. see what my future yeah. looks like. Yeah, I think I do that a lot without even realizing it. Really? Yeah. Like almost like daydreaming, you think? Yeah, and um, I've, at this, I at th that, but I also feel like it's manifesting. Mm, so it's like absolutely. manifestation. I'm like, and I just see and I, I'm going to have that. You know, and it just, it really works. Really? Like, what was like the first thing that you manifested that you felt like, oh my God, I did this. I can't believe I did it. I mean, I want to say... For sure. I, I mean, I knew, but I, I don't want to say just my very first business, but it's like this, everything that comes out of my mouth. I mm. can say I'm going to live there. I have no idea. Like, it could be the most expensive, and I do it. It's just mm. like the weirdest thing. The power of the tongue and, and the power of the unconscious mind is amazing. Mm -hmm. And once people are able to tap into that often, you you would be surprised at things that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I also find, like, the power of writing. Yes. yes. When I write things down. Do you ever go back and be like, oh That God. happened to me one time. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. that happened to me. Like, I manifested an event that I wanted, you know, I wanted to event produce um, for someone. And I wrote down the date. Wow. That it was going to happen. 
Don't tell me it happened. And I wrote down exactly <laughs> what I felt in that moment. Like, oh my God, they called me. I'm producing this amazing event. Mm -hmm. And then two days before the date that I wrote down, it happened. They called me. And I went back to the journal where I wrote it and I cried my eyes, eyes out, out because I couldn't believe, yeah. like, and it's that's like, when I'm it's like... It's almost like you forget, and then when you go back, you're like, oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. And all the things that you actually have accomplished, you know, you're like, this is crazy. Or even, like, the words you use. It's right. It's so weird. Like, you know, to write, it's just like... Right. Sometimes you surprise yourself, like, wow, I spoke that, or I wrote that into existence. Right. It's so crazy. It's 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 so funny. Do you have, like, a, a goal list that you do, like, maybe, like, beginning yes. of the year? Do you always, like, yes. write down, like... Yes. And I still do, um, I had let it go, but now I started once again to do lists. It's, okay. I know it sounds cliche, but you really get everything done, you know, right. or you have, you set your goals and it really does happen. So I think that's very important. And I think that more people should either manifest the things that they want or really write things down and bring them into yeah. fruition because it really does work. What you're doing now, like just being in this killer entrepreneur, um, is this something that you've always saw yourself in or were there other goals maybe that maybe you wanted to be a doctor? No. Or no? No. This was it. Always. You said that with so much confidence, yes. by the way. <laughs> yes. It's always been this for me. It was this or nothing um, mm. because I feel like, I mean, obviously your parents want you maybe to be an attorney or whatever, but I knew, I knew, I knew I wanted to be a female entrepreneur I would always envision myself I remember being very young and envisioning myself owning a club did that you know so it's just like and I I'm a very I'm attracted to power I'm attracted to um women mm -hmm. having that power so that's come from a very young age but where have you seen that so <laughs> I've seen it in two different walks of life okay I've seen it uh my I learned it from my dad as far as like the business, the finances. I've I've was very educated in in that corporate sense from my dad, mm -hmm. and then the strength and um the demanding respect, et cetera, et cetera, came from my mom. But if I had any public figures or like today that we have women that can actually talk about these things, didn't exist mm -hmm. for me back then. So I would just see, again, like the women that we would see on TV, but nothing that I can actually reach or touch and have right. a conversation with. So, so do you almost feel like you created that role for yourself? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, like I said, you know, growing up Latina, we yeah. always see our strong grandparents or our grandmothers, the women in our lives that are so strong, mm -hmm. but never um, actually people like, you know, that we can actually sit down and have these conversations with. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, yeah, I kind of, I kind of leaded that <laughs> from myself. But don't you feel like, did you ever have doubt? I guess that's my question. Because it's scary to like jump into that, especially when you don't have a blueprint of what that really looks like for you. I would agree. So I would agree with you to an extent because um, for some reason, I, always I'm not fearful of things mm. and I think that that's what helps me a lot but I feel like my fear only the fact that I'm not fearful comes from my faith mm. so it's like I'm always feel like I'm, I'm walking in, in with a purpose right. and this is why I always tell women what's the worst thing that can happen just do it you know it doesn't matter what it is man or female what is the worst thing that can happen Right. You f I don't even think it's failure because it's like if you get up and do it again or a different way and you're successful, how would you know? Right. So I feel that um, I just never was fearful of doing things. I'm telling you, Ali, there's things I don't know. I did When I opened my first business, I didn't have a clue of what I was doing. Yeah. I was just like, go, go. That's all that I, I go That's off it. that. Yeah. And it's just crazy because it comes into, you know, fruition and things just are they happen the way it's supposed to? I always say, like, in business, because for me, like, even starting a business, again, I my first business was in event planning. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I never wanted to do events. My sister would be like, oh, oh do my baby shower. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, and so I was never, like, wanting to help in that aspect. Um, but something changed as I grew older. I just really loved the production side of putting things together. 
Um, and I was very scared, but I would always tell people, I'm never going to be the first person to tell myself no. Never. Right. So my no will come from someone else. Mm -hmm. And if they do tell me no, I'm speaking to the wrong person. That's right. So I go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And I've made so many mistakes. Yana, I've cried almost every night. Mm -hmm. Like owning a business. It's like the most like challenging, challenging thing. Like, mm -hmm. where am I going to get the funds to do this? Um, what if this looks horrible? What if, you know, and then there's lawyers involved and, the, and then you got to get things trademarked. And just all of that, that people are yeah. you know, like, I'm like, Ma, you never told me this. No. <laughs> My mother's like, I never did this. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Know? And that's the thing that, but the fact, look, you're doing it. Right. Whether right, you didn't wrong. know how, right. You're doing it. And that's yeah. what counts. And I think that, I feel like more women or you know should take that into consideration and say, "Wow, she did it. Um, I'm just gonna do it, you know, because there's a lot of times we still don't have answers to things. Or what about when you don't know if it's right or wrong? Forget about Correct. now you've already reached certain successes, mm -hmm. but now it's like, is that good for me? Mm -hmm. Will that not be a good thing? Would that business fail? It's like, you know, you just gotta go. But you strike me as like a decisive person. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what you want. Yeah. Um, I definitely know what I want. But sometimes we have people in our lives that may waive your decision a little. Right, right. Or make sure. you say, yeah, but what if they're right? You know? So mm -hmm. I just always keep reminding myself like, no, I know what I want. Mm -hmm. Even if they tell me this, I know what I want. So right. I, it's like you got to keep reminding yourself that. Because it's very easy, you know, to get swayed, mm -hmm. um, you know. If especially if it's somebody you love or that they're close to you, everyone has an opinion. Uh, girl. <laughs> everyone has an opinion. I'm like, please, I can't even hear anymore because mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that I'll ask everybody for their opinion. And then mentally, I'm like, many shots in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> like, too it's many. too much. Mm -hmm. And then I go through anxiety, like, oh my God, why yes. did I just ask all these people? And then you side with some or maybe not others. Yeah, no, you, that'll change. That'll change. Yeah, I'm I'm like, I'm there, borderline, <laughs> yeah. but It'll change. now I'm like, okay, let me just silence the entire room and just pay attention. So now when I pray, I'm like, God, please give me messages in a way that I can understand because sometimes I don't understand anything. That's so I'm right. like, just in the way that I can understand. That's right. But it's so difficult. What, what would you say is the most difficult part in being an entrepreneur? Because you have multiple businesses, not yeah. just one. Right, right. So they all come with different challenges, of course. Right. I feel that being consistent. Um, Major key. Yeah, being consistent mm -hmm. through it's opening up a business is one thing, um, whether it's online, whether it's um, like you do event space, whatever it is, it's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to obtain, to keep it mm -hmm. and to be consistent and be successful at it year after year, I feel like that is the most challenging um, and also, we have a lot on our shoulders. We provide for families. We sign checks. We do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people depend on us. So for me, it's always like, I again, once again, one, I know that one of my purposes here is to help others. So I believe that. I don't feel like it's challenging, but I know it's my purpose, and I don't want to let people down. Right. You know, not what they think of me. That's right. not what it is at all. Right. It's just like, I'm here to bring others with me so that's where and then just that just being consistent and right. being successful at it what was the first business you launched and uh, why so I've always been into beauty obviously yes. once I left the tomboy stage I just like was full throttle beauty and um so I so I many years ago was a hair salon Mm -hmm. uh, in Harlem, believe mm -hmm. it or not, it was on 135th in Harlem, mm -hmm. and again, I didn't know what I was doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just wanted to open a salon, which I did, and it was beautiful. The space was amazing. It was beautiful, um, but it was my first learning experience mm -hmm. in regards to a lot of things: your demographic, um, your market research, um, ahead of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, just like a lot of things. And because I never did hair, it wasn't truly my passion. It was just business is my passion. So it was right. just something I wanted to do. So that was the first one I did. And then mm -hmm. once um, we would get into why that one wasn't successful. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to get into it? Uh, yeah. You want to get into it now? Uh, <laughs> no, it's up to you whenever you like or we can um casually go into it. However you like. So, I, you know, one of the things that I do want to discuss with you is growing up, there's so many things that you go through, right? That mm-hmm. would then make you stop. Mm-hmm wanting to do something right so for instance i went to high school for the performing arts so i studied drama and i feel like i had one of the most difficult times in school um because and i speak about it often on the show because it was was such a heavy thing for me but my accent played a huge role for me so whenever i couldn't get roles i felt very discouraged okay And it almost made me stop acting. Like, I just hated acting all in all. Wow. I was just like, I don't want to be on stage. I don't want to act anymore. I felt like other people kind of. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy because, like, I I don't hear an accent. I think it's beautiful, you know. But I understand what you mean. Like, we do have accents and people hear it when they're not from where we come from. So I can understand your you know, maybe getting turned my off. Frustration. Yeah. <laughs> my frustration. My frustration. It's so weird because you don't know how you're affected as a kid until you're an adult. Absolutely. And then all these things happen to you and then you go back, you may see a therapist and they're like, well, why? And then they bring it back to your childhood, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, now this is why I am the way that I am. Yeah, for So sure. I call it unpacking. Yes. Right? It's like you have to unpack what you have you went through to understand why you are this way. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes that's looking at your family. Absolutely. Right? Family plays a huge role. I know, like, my dad is, like, super into business, but he's a very strong, strict okay. dad. Okay. Like, we always had to, you know, make sure that his slippers were at the front door. Wow. Oh, yeah, he was super strict. Wow. Yeah. What you would call machismo. Machismo. <laughs> in the morning, he was super disrespectful. I love you, papi. But he would throw, like, you know, um, the pot to mm-hmm. cook the rice, you know, the lid? Mm-hmm. He would throw that on the floor just to wake us up in the morning. Oh, wow. To clean the house. Oh, wow. And yeah. I'm like, this is borderline abuse. <laughs> like, <laughs> military. This is like milita- military. And then yeah. it's, it's like what it does to your mind. Right. Like, right. And I grow up and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm this, like, yeah person that's confused in life and so for yeah. you you had a very interesting upbringing and a tragic moment and i want to be sensitive to this no it's fine. and and whatever you want to share um but talk about what happened you know at the age of 18 right i and, mean i could go back even further yeah go back even further <laughs> so um growing up as we stated um as you stated sorry mm-hmm. i um I didn't realize the type of uh, family. I was obviously, you know, where kids were growing up and you just think things are normal. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, I did have a lot of beautiful things and nice things growing up. But again, it's normal to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then about 11, 11 years old, that was the first time that the federal government came to pick up my mother. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it was so crazy. You would have thought like they were coming to get Bin Laden or somebody. It was mm-hmm. in- insane. And I remember it was like a turning point for me because it was the moment I realized that we're not normal. Mm-hmm. We're not. This lifestyle is not normal. Um, and it also, I was so young, but I want to say I became almost like a young adult, I want to say, because I remember grabbing my mother's hand when they were coming. It was just like helicopters and all I remember hearing is do, 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 like a whole bunch of doors and the banging of the doors coming and I I remember grabbing her hand and I'm like everything's gonna be okay at 11 at 11 so it was like but this is like the the bond that my mother and I have is like um I, I don't even know how to describe it like not too many people have that Um, so I feel like our bond was always strong, but Mm -hmm. from that moment, it was like that much stronger, you know? And then, um, so going through junior high school, um, I'm dealing with my mother now being on the run, Mm -hmm. um, from law enforcement and just growing up that way. Could you just imagine? Mm -hmm. Um, 
yes, she was always a part of our lives, but it was just always challenging because we always had to. Well, my, I say we, my brother and I and mm -hmm. my family. Um, see, the things that we, you, you, you know, people see in movies and TV, like, I really lived it, but it was more from a woman's standpoint. Mm. A lot of times we have dads that are in a certain lifestyle, et cetera. My father was in law enforcement. Right. Total opposite. Okay. So, um, so that was the first. It was very traumatizing growing up because it, I couldn't share this with anyone, you know. Right. Um, and just still excelling at everything I did, whether it was in school and all mm -hmm. these things. So that was the first um, traumatic experience where you start realizing, like, my life took a, a crazy turn. turn. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then at um, seventeen was the first time that they. I had just graduated high school. Yes, I was advanced. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> um, I graduated high school and I um, was going to college. This is actually when we spoke earlier. I had met a good friend of ours. Mm -hmm. She didn't know. No one knew. I um, Then now the federal government came looking for both my mom and I. Okay. So, so both. So I was in college, a normal, again, not normal. I was never right. normal, but I was trying to like pursue a uh, American dream, what I guess right. we want to say. Um, and whatever you was that appearing is. normal to the outside world. world right. With fighting okay. all of this and with being on the run comes, it's not just, oh yeah, I'm on the run. No, it's constant pressures, constant. You got to leave from this location. You got to move from this location. Well, yeah. You got to see yourself because the money was never an issue. We had all the money in the world. The thing is, who do you trust? Who you can't right. trust? Where where are they coming from next? You're running for your life every day. Mm -hmm. So that comes with its own challenges and also people who want to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You got people who want to kill you. You got people who want to rob you. It's it's nonstop, nonstop. Right. So um, just like you said, just appearing normal. And then when I, um, when, I when I was going to college, then that federal indictment came. And I'm just like, oh, my God, am I ever going to get a break? But, but wait, let me ask you, did anyone ever ask, like, well, what does your parents do? Yeah. All the time. So we were trained to say certain things. My dad, I was covered because my dad was in law enforcement, but they would always ask. I, okay. I would always get pulled over in school. Like, you know, my mom was coming like every other day with exotic vehicles and jewelry and money. Like it was, it was in your face, right. you know, but um, it was, we were just trained to say certain things. And mm -hmm. um, and that's, and that's what it was. But like I said, it was very challenging. And then at 18, was when they came for the federal indictment on the both of us, which then at that point I had to leave school, which is not what I wanted. I actually wanted to pursue, you know, a great career. Did they pull you out of school? Was that no? We I got wins because um, someone made a phone call, so mm -hmm. I ha we had enough time. Like I had another friend at the time who like signed me out of all my classes. Back then, right. you were able to do so much. Before nine right. eleven, you were able to do so much forgery and mm -hmm. like we had, mis diff you know, fake IDs and of course, for sure. You know, we yeah. travel, we traveled private all the time before it became cool. Right. Um. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's like even if I do that now, it's like not even something I post because any it, honestly, it's kind of like when I lived this, it wasn't a fun life. You right. Know? Um. So yeah, it comes with all the glory, all the. Everything you can think of, but I kid you not when... So let me go back to when at 18, um, when we both went on the run, I had to leave school. I had to do all these things, but my life changed. Now mm. it's like, what man is going to want to date me? Like, right. what do I have going on for myself, really, except spending money shopping and hanging out? Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's not the life that I wanted, and I'm sure that's not the life my mother wanted for her children. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just kind of like... A hand that you're dealt because mm -hmm. this was instilled in her from her parents. Right. Again, not when you come in from Puerto Rico and she was raised in South Side, you know. Right. And right. So it's just it's just different. So um, then after that, it, more challenging, you know. We're, now it's both of us that are on the run and being on America's Most Wanted and like all these things um really takes a toll on you as a woman. But never once did it deter me from my goal mm -hmm. that I knew that I wanted to be successful and an entrepreneur someday. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that looked like at the time, but I knew that, for example, when they came and they um, finally, after seven years, when they came and they 
I was on my mother and I were on the run for seven years, but when they came to pick us up, um, I kid you not, it was like it's over. I was happy. You, you it was, said that? Yeah. Yep. I could remember when they threw the handcuffs on me. I was so like, you weren't it like, was a wolf I, song. I feel like I would be so freaked out. No. It was for me, it was like I'm ready to face the music. Wow. Yeah. It, uh, I've, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie where people kind of like, where the commit, they just want to get it over with. Right. That's where I was at. Is it because you knew eventually this would be the outcome? Of course. Right. There's only two outcomes. Right. So it's just like, right. I'm like, you know, I just want this to be over with. And I, for all of us, it was just literally draining, literally. So it's like. When that happened, I was like, I'm ready to face the music and move on with my life. I was still young. Mm -hmm. So I thought in my head, even though I knew that we were going to face a long time in prison, right. I um, I knew I still had a shot. You know? Was there ever a time where you questioned your parents or told them, why? What, like, why are we doing this? Can we stop? This is not the light. Or were you almost like, I know what we're doing is wrong, but then we have all these glitz and glam and it's like uh -huh. it's almost like an addiction right where you want to stop but you can't so, right so i can't for, for i could speak so remember my dad was in law enforcement right. what i can speak for my mom is when you don't know nothing else this is what you do to provide for your family for you hold it down by all means necessary i know what it is to see my mom do strong business with men you know mm -hmm. so it's like so you knew so mm -hmm. what what else are you going to do you know so and it's it's it sounds like well, you can get out it sounds that way but when your mind is so embedded in something that's what you know how to do and provide for your family so that's so i never questioned her if okay. anything i respected why she did it mm. because she did it for all of us right. um she did it to provide a certain lifestyle for all of us yeah she could have worked or whatever but maybe that's not what was in her cards. And I feel like um, I was never angry of anything. I admire her strength mm. because everything I've seen her do, everything I've seen her go through, everything. Like, I've seen things that I'll be like, you know? Yeah. And it was, always, and it was my mom, you know? Yeah. So it's like, so that I was, I never questioned it. I knew that she did it for a reason and more so because that's all she knew. Right. You know? I always tell people... Do not judge my decisions if you didn't know what my options were. That's right. And that's so true. And yeah. that's wh that's where I know where she was at because I know my mother's heart. I know, like, my mother gave to everybody. It wasn't yeah. just us. It was everybody. Like, right. she was paying the whole neighborhood's rent. Like, she did everything for everyone else. She's like that to this day. She yeah. can't even go through her phone and see GoFund. She's just like... Sending yeah, people giving, money, people yeah. she doesn't know. During the pandemic, that's like all she did was like everyone who was reaching out. I'm like, ma, sometimes you have to be careful. Right. But right, it's just like right. that's what she loves to do. She but where just, do you think that comes from? Like her giving spirit and just wanting to give. You know, I she always tells me, and this is how Vida came about. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, like she would always pray. Well, her prayers from a very young age was to heal, mm. to be able to heal people with her hands, to be. So I guess she just always, from her young age, those that's what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that kind of just, you know, it was an effect of what she was doing. So she's like, maybe this is my way to give back, you right. know. And like you said, I'm sure a lifestyle and, and certain respect and the way people treat you kind of comes with that too, oh, you know. Oh, of course. You know, so I think that, but never once I questioned her. And I remember my dad knowing what was going on and he would tell me, come live with me. Because I guess he knew what was going to be the determining yeah. factor. For me, it was never an option. For me, it's like, so I'm staying with not, my mother. No matter it. what. Like, I'm staying with my mom. And he Even had, knowing what the outcome was going to be. Absolutely. I was never leaving my mother. Mm. So, once again, the bond between a mother and a daughter. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And yeah. I feel like if we have more of that in our homes, um, I think, as you stated, like... Growing up and, and things that traumatizing things that we have can be a lot of issues could be saved or like, you know, just not turn out to what they are mm -hmm. if we have those better relationships, you right. know, or communication. But, you know, not everybody. 
not everybody thinks like that. Yeah. <laughs> that sure. moment when you knew like, okay, this is what it is and I've mm-hmm. accepted it. What was that moment then when you are now in prison? Mm-hmm. What was that like? At the age of 18. Yeah. So that was like, oh, no, it's not 18. My mom was on the run for seven years. Sorry. So I was like tw- uh, 25? 25. 25. Okay. So um, I was just like ready to, you know, face what I had to do and just looking forward to a better life at some point. And it's so funny because we didn't know this at the time, but my mother and I were together when they picked us up. At some mm-hmm. point, they were going to separate us. Obviously, we knew we were never going to possibly see each other again in the prison system. And um, I remember looking at her Mm -hmm. and saying, I'm taking all this blame. My mother has, she's older than me. I have my whole life ahead of me. And my mother's looking. Where does that mindset even come from? I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I knew that, you know, I think when you love they say you never truly loved unless you're willing to die for it. Mm. So mm-hmm. that's how I feel about her. I, I feel about my mother, you know. And um, I felt like looking at her and I'm just like, you know, my duty is to take this full responsibility. I had nothing to do with it, but it's my duty as her child. And she thought the same. She was thinking the same. Like she would look at me while we're there. And my, I want you to picture this. It's like gritty prison you know orange because we were federal inmates and then the status of our um of our crime or whatever we're every we're always shackled Mm -hmm. so picture is shackled and uh, you know just me looking at her and her looking at me and it's like a mother and daughter and she's thinking the same thing and we spoke about it after you know Mm -hmm. and she's like i and i remember the sound to this day when i walked in when I opened the door and the feds were there and she's like, she just starts screaming. She's like, don't take my daughter. So oh. it's always been very emotional. So it does take a toll on you, like I said. Um, but I'm just happy that we, you know, overcame mm-hmm. all these things and were mm-hmm. able to uh, process, talk about it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Sorry. I know I literally got emotional sorry. as well. Like yeah, you were just talking sorry. about it. Just <laughs> I think from I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know what, too, Ali? I left so many beautiful women there. So many beautiful women that were there for reasons that maybe the man that they were dating, you know, right. or these and this is the reason why when I told you I go so hard, is mm-hmm. because I feel like they didn't get a second chance. I did. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, yeah, it's like, it's like just my duty, but I'm just so happy that we were able to overcome. Yeah. <laughs> because then um, from that moment when I, so so when we got our second chance at life, um, which will be very interesting to mm-hmm. hear once um, the docuseries does come yeah, out. Yeah, well, that's where, yes, that was where yes. I was going to go with it. <laughs> yes, um, once that comes out and... Um, you'll be able to understand and what happened and how our lives turned around and we were we went completely legitimate um i don't want to give it all because no but but the idea of like okay the moment of saying i want to share it yeah you know i i want to talk about it i want to do the docu series mm-hmm. what in your mind said let now i'm ready to tell my story being politically correct. I was tired of being politically correct. Okay. I was tired of having interviews, speaking engagements, and people like, how did you start? What's your story? Where right. are you from? And I'm just like, just saying the bare minimum, you right. know? And I'm just, one day I was just being interviewed and I'm just like, it's like heavy. It was heavy. Right. It just it was, weighs on you. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? This is my truth. Either you're mm-hmm. going to accept me for who I am mm-hmm. and that's just what it is. And um, And if anything, when I did start speaking my truth, Beautiful things have come from it. And Mm -hmm. like I said, it is my truth. And um, that's when I said, I have to say this story. We have to say this story, my mother and I. And, you know, it'll be other elements to it, whether it's, you know, my brother, you know, just Uh other people involved. But um, I just said I had to because, like I said, there are so many women, whether where we come from, there are a lot of things like, 
It could be who you dating. It could be choices you choose to make. It could be so many things. And I just want to let and share with everyone, like m both women and men, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of times guys see us and it's just like, well, she's cute, you know, right. not realizing like we've go through some stuff, you know, and no one has any idea. I can say shit, but we go through some shit, you yeah, know, no, and it's like, it. we go through some um, shit. And I just wanted people to know and, and um, not, it's not even about like, oh, yeah, you got a TV show. No, it's not about that for me. It's not about no, the money for me. No, I think it's so me. much deeper. Yeah, it's so much deeper. It's a love story between a mother and a daughter. It's um, it's just so much. Um, It touches on so, a lot of social um things where when we were going through something, now, for example, um, marijuana is legit, the cannabis industry. You know, it's... Again, throughout the whole docu series, it's many years that we're talking about it. But those are the things that I, a lot of social issues that I would like to discuss and talk about. I would like to let women know, like nothing, no matter what you've been through. Mm -hmm. If you've done twenty years in prison, you'll be fine. Right. You know, um, just give not we'll be fine, but I want you to know that there's like never give up. You know, right. is what I'm trying to say. Just never give up. So that's um the reason, the main reason why yeah. I want to tell the story. How is it now hearing the story from your mom's perspective? Like when you hear her <laughs> version of the story and So I, I cannot put it. She's still very um I, I don't even know how she holds a lot of the stuff in, you right. know. And I like you said earlier, your mom, you never seen her break or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that this will be very therapeutic. Right. You know, very therapeutic for her and just discussing it. And there's some things I, I've heard that I didn't even know, you know, right. but I think um, I want to hear it even more so. So as it everything starts, um, you know, unraveling itself, yeah. it would be very interesting to know because um, our parents sometimes go through things that we never know about. And maybe we'll understand like certain decisions even more so that they made. Um, so I think that's that would be very nice to see. But when people yeah, hear her say the story, they like, yeah. wow, you know. Um, I say it from a daughter's perspective. She says it from a mom. So Right. So then you now finally being released and now you getting a second chance at life and, you know, starting your business. What What is that like for you? Okay. So that, um, that was, so when we got our second chance and mm -hmm. we were released from prison, my mother vowed to never, you know, engage in that lifestyle. And I went full throttle. Mm -hmm. I went back to school, um, studied finance, and mm -hmm. while sitting in class, okay. right. <laughs> you know, not knowing how I was going to do it, mm -hmm. I just said, like, you know, um, I, you know, I would have, I think it was, I was in social, I forgot what class I was in, and this man is just like, you know, a lot of women, it's going to take you forever. The professor? or The just professor. Like said this? Yeah, it's like, it's going to take you forever to, you know, attain, I don't know, maybe $100,000 and open up your okay. own professor. Yeah, I'll never forget it. And I was just like, fucking, I'm going to do this. And I just one day said I'm going to open it. It was small. It was a small business, but I said I'm going to do it. And that's exactly what I did. I um just opened. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. And I just and when I opened, I kid you not, we were busting at the seams. Like and then I you know, great relationships and mm -hmm. just networking and one thing led to another. So that's how we kinda um wait, so the first business was nail lounge. Yeah, well the very, very first very one first. was Javasi Kian, which okay. was in Harlem. This was yes, before yes, I got yes. picked up mm -hmm. by the feds. So that was my first business. But when you asked before what happened, mm -hmm. I lost it due to right. going to jail. Okay. Yeah. So um, so that was that. And then Nail Lounge was the first one that was extremely successful, which allowed mm -hmm. me to expand and do other things and so forth. But then in that interim, my mom was focusing Remember I tell you about healing, and yeah. she always loved natural teas, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So she decided, that's how she started creating Vida. Yes. So that's how yes, Vida yes. came about. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I'm like, it's the cutest thing. My mom would literally, remember like the PayPal? Like, yes. She would write everything by hand. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is crazy, <laughs> right? It was so bad. It was out of like a wonton soup thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, 
it was crazy. So I'm just like, I can't believe that she's doing this. And then, um, so she was selling it in the salon. Right. And people were loving it. And they would come back and it just started just building on its own. Mm -hmm. So organic. A lot of influencers, celebrities started using the product. So it just took off on its own. And um, then I said to, I, I remember my assistant at the time, I was like, without her knowing, I'm like, you do a website like just anything yeah and um so once we did the web did the website it was over it was like over. it was yeah. crazy crazy i'm like this is insane what was the demand like insane like yeah. we couldn't keep up i remember wow. like us sitting and and then like with instagram and us sitting there and i think it was one time too like uh cardi had made a post and it <laughs> we were literally just sitting there and it was just like and different people. It was not just her. It was like right. so many people that um, makeup influencers or just like right. a lot of people, as I stated. Um, and I, we would just see and it would just be like, ching, 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 ching. And we were just like, this is crazy. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to fulfill these Yeah, like orders? how do you fulfill it? Yeah, how do you fulfill it? And um, oh, then it went Well, on. who was working with like how many people? Like describe At that it. time, it was like me. It, my mom was doing everything. Right. Then it would be like me and my brother help out. But then, you know, we have our own businesses going on. So then, then she would hire like one or two people. Then before you knew it, it was like, okay, this cannot work in the kitchen no more. And then right. that's, we went and got a warehouse and- so that's how uh, Vida came about. But it was um, just to see the transition from my mother where she was and mm -hmm. then to just become this successful, you know, CEO yeah. overnight. And it's just like, wow. You know, um, like I said, God has a plan for us. Absolutely. And, you know, once we chose to turn our lives around, it was just beautiful, you know. So, yeah. So that's how that came about. <laughs> that's and how then, it came about. But then you have another business. Yeah. <laughs> so was it the swimwear line that came? So I had did the swimwear line with a girl, a uh, good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I, I got to be careful when you say girlfriend because these yeah, days yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no offense to anyone. Right, but, right. <laughs> um, whatever floats your boat. Um, but um, so I, we did that and uh, she wanted to do a swimwear line. She came to me and I said, sure, like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. um, it was great. It was very successful pandemic. Mm -hmm. Kind of messed that up for us because we were manufacturing in Colombia. Okay. So for Colombia was shut down maybe to like a year ago that they started opening up. So we couldn't manufacture. We probably could have did it in Asia or somewhere else. But, you know, the lockdowns were so crazy right, right. that um, it didn't allow us because... I want to say, not because I'm being biased, but I feel like our swimwear line, the quality, Colombians understand fabric. They understand the, the female body. Um, so the anatomy of it, you know, so it's like yeah. they know how to make your curves. and I have it. Yeah. <laughs> I really? have the, so Chachi nice. wore um, Which the one? pink one. Okay. Okay. And then I was like, oh my God, it looks so amazing. Yeah. Did you feel the fabric? And, and I ordered it right away. Aww. Thank you. And it shipped right away. Yeah, yeah. And I think I DM'd you at the time, Aww. and I said, "Oh my God, I'm leaving to Dominican Republic. I need this." Oh my God! And it shipped so quick. Thank you. And it made it to my DR trip. There you go. <laughs> and I have it. And yes, the quality is amazing. Yeah. And just like it's something where no one else has that swimsuit, no. which that's what I love. Yeah. For like sure. I wore it and I'm like, no girl's going to have this. And right. I didn't see anybody with it. Oh, that's it's the awesome. perfect color. It, it cuts really good. Even, you know, the butt. I was just going to say. It's a big thing. Yes, especially for us Latinas. Like mm -hmm. we always have either the waist, the hips, the butt, right. you know, the cut. So that's what we really focused on. And Colombia right. understands that. Mm -hmm. And like embellishments and gems and just the quality of it. But Again, because of pandemic, we weren't able to do that. And, you know, she's doing great things and she's being super successful. And so am I. Yeah. So it's kind of like to come back to that. And pandemic for Vida was like, forget about it. So, you yeah. know, we were just consumed in what we were doing. And um, so, the, you know, right now, Infinity is not, Infinity Swimwear is not, we know we're not manufacturing anything. Right. But I went on to do Honor. <laughs> yes. So, um, which has been I kid you not, speaking of Chachi, that morning when I launched, I was like, I should have did clothes a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> I always felt like that was like the next step for, for you. you. Oh, yeah. my God. I was like. Because you always give fashion. Thank you. Thank you. Like, I, was that something like even young? I, like, you yeah. just. 
You yeah. just love dressing. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you... my name Kiana. Like my dad used. It's a silk pant, panton, a right. pen. Um, my dad used to wear that. My dad is very dapper, very GQ. My mom too. So it's always fashion's always been a thing for me. Um, it's just the timing, you know, right. the time, who to do it with. Then, like you said, one business. I was doing nail lounge. I didn't know I was going to open up a nightclub. Right. You know, it's just like God guides you in so many different directions that you just kind of going with the flow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the young lady um, that I, her name is Yamaira, that I have the honor with. Mm-hmm. She um, came to me seven years ago. We were supposed to do this seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Timing wasn't right. Um, again, I was doing nightlife, you know, um, nail salons and, and Vida and just so much. So the timing, you know, our scheduling. Then finally, we were just like, we got to do this, you know. So good. Yeah, it's thank so you. It's so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so amazing. Like, thank you. What, what are some of, like, the, I guess, like, the go-to pieces that you gravitate to? Uh, pieces that empower us or that mm. are, like, sexy but not trashy. Um, I feel I, like you do blazers a lot. Yes. And I love this look. I was going to say that. Okay. Like, it's, and it's, like, it's kind of been a signature kind of thing like people mm. remember I am I am a businesswoman but I do love fashion however I feel like the workplace for many years was boring you know like yeah. just that plain suit but it's nothing like a powerful sexy suit and I agree so we do do a lot of blazers um but I, I just want to focus on anything that makes us look fashionable but we can take it anywhere you know from the streets to the corporate office anywhere mm-hmm. so that's what honor, uh, well, honest, you know what honor stands for. Yeah. But we did the word play and we did on her. Mm-hmm. So I remember when um, we launched that morning, I remember saying a prayer right before it launched. And then just that launch button. And I was like, again, the same effect. Ding, ding, ding. And I'm just like, and Chachi so happened to call me. And yeah. I was crying. I was like, so I cannot good. believe this. So guys, whoever supported honor, thank you so much. The fact that, Every time I post something, you girls do not play. No. You ladies do not play. Thank you. I don't know which camera is. Wait, so that's your camera. We do not okay. play about Kiana, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We you, do not play about yes, you. Yes, and I love the support, guys. Like, every time I post something, you guys make it sell out, man. And I cannot, I can't be more thankful, you know, so. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to do a big blowout sale for Black Friday, yes. so. But, um, You yeah. know what I think it is, too? I think for you... Like, outside looking in, I honestly feel like you're not going to sell anything that you don't use yourself, you. that you currently do not wear yourself. Like, I feel like you're literally a walking brand. Yeah. But for things that you honestly use yourself, wear yourself, it's this, even if the cameras weren't on, this is still something you would do no matter what. No, for sure. And to be quite honest with you, like, um, I, I remember telling my business part that, partner at the very beginning, like, no offense to anyone, but there are some people who have brands but don't wear They wear their brands to promote it, mm-hmm. you know, but they won't wear it out. Right. I want to wear my brand out. I stand behind it. I sit here with you in front of you with an honor hoodie, that is so honor dope. leather shorts. Like, this is what I do, you know, and I really stand behind it. It's my brand. I love it. And I, like you said, I, I, I don't, I don't want to put nothing out there that I wouldn't wear myself. Yeah. You know, and I want, if the woman, sometimes like exactly how I wore it, that's how the girls are buying it. And yes. I love that Absolutely. because I'm like, thank you guys. Like you, you see the effort, you know, or sometimes like I get dressed in 25 minutes. <laughs> People be like, what? And I'm like, yes, I don't, you know, give that much thought. So sometimes it's like the least thought you put into it comes out better sometimes than when you actually go super hard. But, um, yeah, I'm excited about all these projects I have going on. We also now have V the Dry Bar. So besides the nail lounges, we also have, I have um, V the Dry Bar. I don't want to see here. It sound like I'm talking about No, we, hello. (laughs) What? This is real life. Or like an infomercial. No, um, this is real life for you. Yeah, no. um, So we started the Dry Bars because naturally... Be the hair products, and everyone's always like, "How do you use it? Where can I buy it?" So we um decided to create a dry bar where people could come and try the products, purchase it, and see if you know they love it. More than likely, you will love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um yeah, that's pretty much. Am I missing? I feel I feel like you're not gonna stop though. I feel like this no, is not no. the last business we're gonna get no. from you. No, I. To be honest with you, Ali, I want to focus on uh beauty, fashion. 
in that lifestyle space. I'm happy where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. I I want to keep just scaling the businesses. Um, and I do dibble and dabble in other investments and, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's real estate, whether it's startup companies. I really like that space, the startup company. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy. I'm I want to talk about partnerships. Yeah. And sure. what that feels and looks like. Because for me, I, I know a lot of people are almost scared mm -hmm. to partner with someone and giving up a percentage mm -hmm. of their business. Right. So what is that like for you? And do you have any partners currently, um, you know, with your business? So um, the only partner I have is Yamaida with um, Honor. Well, Honor. Mm -hmm. And we came together collectively, collectively on this project. So I didn't even think about um, percentages or if I'm giving too much or too little. Mm -hmm. um, even if I invested you know most of it or whatever that wasn't an issue to me it was just like we came to in this together however when you speak about partnerships it has to be the right partnership right it has to be, it has to make sense um what i have you don't have what you have i don't have right. so us together though we create greatness i think that's what's key or essential you mm -hmm. don't want to just go into partnership with just anyone because they're going to invest in you or whatever it is like it ha even if it's an investor, it has to be the right investor. Right. You know, someone who sees your vision, someone who's going to respect your vision. Mm -hmm. um, never, I don't, I, I feel like equity is very important. You know, you don't right. want to give up all of it. You know, so right. in regards to partnerships, it's very sensitive. I've mm -hmm. had partnerships where they failed, you know, mm -hmm. um, where they robbed me, for, you know, right. thousands and thousands of dollars. So, but it's all a learning experience. So right. it's okay. You know, it's how you come back. Um, but as I stated, I think partnerships are good when they're the right partnership. Right. Um, but they're not good if you're just doing something to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as Vida, that's a family owned business. We do everything together. We make decisions together. Even if we're going to do a sale, we make them together. Mm hmm um, I am the face, but my mom is the creator of the brand. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my brother, you know, he's just always, it's just, it's us three. Right. So, and then besides that, I don't have any other partners. What about like, cause even with family, like I've, I've heard people say like, never do business with family. family. Yeah. You know, <laughs> don't let your family know how much money you have. Mm -hmm. Like, but you're on the opposite, opposite. end of it. Right. So how is it like working with family and the, the stigma behind working with family members? Again, it's all about relationships, mm -hmm. um, communication. And I feel like if you have a solid foundation, a solid family, that doesn't exist. Right. Um, money won't, you know, create. And everybody has to know their role and what you're good at. That part. And someone has to lead. You know, someone has to lead and everybody has to be OK with that. So it's a lot of um, moving components that have to make or everyone has to agree to, especially with family. Mm -hmm. um, I know other fa family run businesses that they make decisions collectively. Sometimes people don't like working with them because it's five or six of them that have right. to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case with us. But um, I, I do agree that it's about the relationship. It's so much of, and communication. Um, if you have a shitty cousin or it's, it's not going <laughs> to work the person. Yeah. It's not going to work. It's not the person. Unfortunately, you know, it's not going to work, but with my family, I, we've been close forever. So we're very transparent. Um, everybody knows how much money we get. Like, you know, yeah, it is what it is. Um, so I'm blessed in that way, but I do agree that there's certain situations where it's not a good idea, you know, but I think, mm -hmm. you know, that sometimes mm -hmm. we know things before and we yeah. still do them. Well, you feel it. It's yeah. an intuition. Absolutely. What are some of, give me like top three advice for an aspiring entrepreneur. Um, set your goals, right? Like set your goals. And it's like, I, I, I feel like now with social media, everyone wants to rush. Like mm -hmm. tomorrow you want to be an entrepreneur. You set up an Instagram, mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur. I feel like everyone should set their goals, stay true to them. Um, love your story. Because we all have one. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to say your story, it makes you unique. You know, um, it or, or just like, this is who you are. You didn't rush it, you know. But take your time. Focus on your goals. Um, 
try to have no distractions. If you're not where you want to be, you should really yeah. stay grounded. Um, I have so many. <laughs> I've, I've, I I give as many as you can. Yeah, I could drop well, I you so con- many jewels. Cons- consistency was yeah, one so for consistency you. Consistency is key for sure. Um, uh, goals, consistency. Let me see what else. Uh, focus. What else? What else? I feel like just being true to what yeah. your belief is. Because as we said before, we get swayed sometimes mm-hmm. by different decisions. Um, and never give up. Yeah. Never give up. No matter what no one tells you, never give up. I was, I came from the bottom, you know, so mm-hmm. under the concrete. So it's like right, right. we all, um, we're all destined for greatness if we put our hearts to it. So I really want to say, you know, just... Focus, stay true to who you are. And I think you could never go wrong. Yeah. What 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 would be the one thing you would say um has attributed to your success? Um I feel that the one thing that I can say is being true to myself, but also helping. Helping. Helping mm-hmm. others and giving back. I feel that none of my success would have not come without me giving back without networking, without um, building key, you know, crucial and important relationships. I right. think that that's definitely the key to uh, my success, for sure. Mm-hmm. The minute that, you you know, you're selfish or want everything for yourself, you're going to fail. Or the minute you think you know everything. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. The minute you think you know everything, you failed. Mm-hmm. And I always say, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown. So mm-hmm. we have to be mindful of all these things and know that you're given this position for a reason Mm -hmm. and be able to and this is why it's so important whether you meditate whether you work out whether you pray we definitely have to um stay grounded in our minds so that's what i would say what is a field or or something that you have yet to step into that you would like to step into i want to because i feel like you're not afraid of anything no i'm not (laughs) I'm not. <laughs> I don't mean. I know it sounds I crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm not. I'm not afraid of anything. That's your um, superpower, which I love. Yeah, I'm just. I just fear God. But besides that, I do not fear anything. I know it's like the weirdest thing. Um, but I would def. I want to be like a big developer. Mm. I want to be like a big Latina developer. I would love to develop smart homes. I would like. That's mm-hmm. where I want to like really tap into. I want to um provide. Beautiful homes from the private communities, okay. um, things like that. That's definitely one of what I, I would love to do. That, like a big project. I see that. Uh, yeah, it's coming. I, it's gonna happen, girl. You're, <laughs> you are not gonna give up. I see. Like no. an, you have to come back again. No, because, of course, so, of course. I feel like you're gonna do so much. Thank you. Thank um, you. All right, two more questions. Oh, no, please. Thank okay, you. and these are rapid fire questions. Okay. Um, Guys, these were not talked about. I know, yeah, like, these this are This is so, you know, it's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me you're Latina without telling me you're Latina. Ooh. Ah, that's a good one. Um, uh, uh. No, I don't want to say that. I, I, I'm i always fixing. Well, that's true. I, like, fix myself <laughs> up around the house. Like, you know okay. how Latinas are always, like, dog. Yeah, I'm going to dress up to pretty much go anywhere. Yeah. Um. No, but it got to be something else. Uh. Damn, that's a good one. Oh, so, uh, Latin music. Yes. On the weekends. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Especially to clean. Are you kidding yes. me? Yes. Yes, for sure. I love Latin music on the weekends. What do you like to listen to? Salsa. Yeah, I love it. I love salsa so much. Um, again, it just brings me back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that. Um, what else? Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, finish this sentence. Growing up Latina is one of the most beautiful things anyone. Well, no, I would. I wouldn't. I, anyone can experience. Um, let me see. We got. We got to come back to that. Okay. Um, growing up Latina. Ah. Uh, yeah, it is beautiful. It's mm-hmm. like embracing our culture and just and challenging and fun and it, I don't know. I want to say that I I want to say I'm proud to grow up Latina. 
That's what mm-hmm. it is for me. I'm proud of it, and I'm proud of our culture and where we stand. Yes. Yeah. Kiana, thank you so much. Thank you. For coming on thank the show. You, thank like, you. You are someone that I look up to. You've been on my mood board for <laughs> outfits because oh I live for your fashion and just your drive. And, you know, when you see someone on Instagram and you're so invested in their story, like, that's how I feel about you. you. And just, you know, the fact that you're so humble and you're like, I, Thank you. we spoke and I was like, is there anything that's off the table that I can't ask you? You're like, yeah. no. Yeah. Ask thank whatever, you. like, I want to be transparent. So thank you so much thank you. for coming on this show and, and sharing your and story. And thank you for having me and thank you for having this platform for us. Like um, I mentioned briefly to you, I feel like it's very important that you highlight, you know, amazing Latinas. And I love to see what you're doing. So congratulations on thank that. You. And you're going to kill it and continue to kill it. You already are. Thank you. But um, yeah, no, thank you for having me and um, for giving me the flowers that you just said to me because it truly inspires me to do better and be great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Diana Aviles, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>